So how about in terms of earnings? I know that mm -hmm. you shared a post, we'll link to that in the show notes, and you and you kind of break down, okay, you have your job, include that information, yeah. here's how much I'm earning from my full-time work, profit sharing from ConvertKit, and then you have uh, kind of laying out the income that you're also earning from your side hustle. What have you found to be, as a creator with significant followers on multiple platforms, what have you found to be the most effective way to create an income and then mm. advice around that for other people who are looking to do a similar thing in a different industry. Yeah. So I think there's, um, so I, I doubled the income that I made from my side hustles last year, which was awesome. really exciting. Um, uh -huh. And I think that doubling came, I can pinpoint it to three things um, if we have time to go into them. Yeah, we do. Um, and can you say what it was and then what it went to? Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to speak in pounds because sure. that's the currency that my business is Just to do the done. math in your head would be impossible. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, in the previous year, I earned 19,638 pounds from my mm -hmm. side projects. And then in the last year, I earned 41,580 pounds. So mm -hmm. I think it was like technically 112% growth if we want to be specific. Yeah, which is awesome. Yeah. And the rough, the like, would it be like 1.4? I have no idea what that, like. I think it's like almost 60,000 US dollars is, would okay. be what yeah. I earned this year. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. To give us Perfect. some frame of reference for the rest sure. of it. <laughs> yeah. And everybody who usually operates in pounds is just going to be like, finally. Like, yeah, yeah. Someone's yeah. speaking my language. <laughs> we have to, in order to honor that, we'll have to do the, the reverse whenever that comes up in US dollars. So. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah um, so, so what do you, yeah, the three things you attribute mm -hmm. that to is what, is, uh, are what? Um, the first thing is I managed to land a channel sponsorship which mm -hmm. gave me consistent income throughout the year. So mm -hmm. this is with Figma. They're a design tool. I use them for my work, love them, feature them in my yeah. videos often. Even we just started using Figma for, all of, Figma for all of our brands. And it's the same thing. It's like awesome. Yeah, yep. love it. And so they pay to sponsor my channel monthly. They pay me $2,000 uh -huh. a month. And what that gets them is a link near the top of my description on every video. Yep. It gets their logo. It says powered by Figma at the start of every one of my uh -huh. videos. And it's sort of like a, um, a brand alignment, I guess, yeah. is, is what they're paying for there. Yeah. Um, and that's like the tool you're using, which makes it a really yeah. easy yes Perfect for fit. you. Like mm -hmm. you talk about live streaming. Mm -hmm. My guess is 90% of the time it's you in Figma. Exactly. Working yep. on that. Yep. yep. How did that come about? Did you reach out to them? Did they reach out to you? Yeah, I actually did reach out to them and suggest it because um, I'd had a previously Webflow sponsored my channel for a few months, yep. um, which is another tool that I use regularly and it will also stream yeah. in a lot. Um, they had some changes to like their marketing priorities and my channel was uh -huh. sadly no longer one of them for a channel sure. sponsorship. But I was like, this has been great, you know, having regular income from YouTube yep. that uh, I can count on. And so I reached out to Figma and was like, would you like to take over this slot, this channel sponsorship yeah. slot? Um, and pitched it to them, told them, you know, gave them some details on my view counts and just really tried to make the pitch based on aligning mm -hmm. our two brands and how it would be good for them for, you know, for us to be aligned. And they went and who it. who is it? Who what person is it? And how long did it take you to get to that person to have mm. that conversation? So luckily for me, it didn't take a long time um, because I feel like I've just been building up my network within yeah. this like tech design, web design yep. world uh for the past you know like five six years something like that yes. and so it's it's a case right now of okay i know i'm going to know someone who knows someone at the company that i uh -huh. want to speak to um i think for figma if i remember correctly i might have honestly now that i'm remembering reached out to their ceo who i'd met at sure. a conference um sure. <laughs> and we yeah. chatted and i was like hey Dylan. <laughs> yeah um <laughs> what do you think about this and he was like let me pass mm -hmm. you on to the right person i think that's how that one went down yeah sure but i think point important point there is I think a lot of people might hear that and think, oh, email the CEO. But actually right. the important little piece before that is the 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 phrase where you said met at a conference. Yes. Like yes. that work was done mm -hmm. well beforehand and mm -hmm. it was probably pretty genuine. It wasn't oh, yeah. like, hey, I have this idea of like, I wanna get a sponsorship. It was like, I love Figma, great to meet you, having a conversation, showing up at the conference, doing the hard work of sometimes mm -hmm. just like meeting people without any purpose in that interaction um and you know you call it networking call it like relationships um whatever it might be it's a great example of kind of the phrase of your network is your net worth or your net worth is your network yeah, yeah. like whatever that phrase is but just the significance of the people that you know totally. so is there a way that you manage 
or like keep track of the connections that you have. It's been something I've been thinking about. I've been testing this app called Folk. Um, Folk.app, I think is, is what it is. But like, or is it more of like, hey, you know that you have, you know, Gmail or whatever it is you use, you save contacts in there. But is there any type of like mm, process you have around mm. your network? Uh, most of mine honestly centers on Twitter. I'm a big sure. fan of Twitter. I've been on the platform for over a decade. Like yep. it's terrifying to think about, you know, if you wanted to scroll back through my old tweets and hear what I was yeah, thinking sure. when I was in university, I don't know. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, that is the core place that I would say I do quote unquote yeah. networking. I yep. like to follow people and not just follow passively, but get involved in conversations mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. the people who I admire. Um, and I will like, you know, do that purposefully. Yeah. Watch what they're talking about, what they're working on, and respond to them, give them praise when it's deserved, yeah. and yeah, that sort of thing. Yeah. Do you, we talked about Sean Blanc, who's a, a friend and somebody we've inter interviewed on the podcast before. Feels like that would have the potential to be like a Twitter connection at some point. Did you? Yeah. Do you remember connecting with Sean on Twitter? Is that how that yeah, connection actually happened? Yeah, I'm pretty sure happened? we've connected on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's talked about that as well, like the connections he's had from his um, uh, Twitter followers. And I'm, I don't really use it. And so for me, it's like, it's interesting to look at Twitter because I think a lot of times we and people who listen to this podcast think of Twitter as like, or think of social platforms as like, how do I get more traffic? How mm -hmm. do I grow? But I think Twitter is an excellent tool to have meaningful connections with people mm -hmm. and to build relationships. Totally. I and saw you said um, you're in Taylor Lawrence, Go, yeah. who is a, a journalist for the New York Times, I believe. She, uh -huh. I saw her tweet the other day that like perfectly summed up my approach to Twitter. And she said, I think, sure, I guess I post a lot on here if you consider Twitter a social network, but I see it as a chat room. Yeah. And I was like, yep, that's exactly how I tweet. I right. tweet it. Man, Twitter's on the brain. Treat it. That's how I treat yeah. Twitter is at yeah, more yeah, as a yeah. chat room. Um, less um, broadcasting and more conversing. Yeah. Yes. And so somebody posts something you respond to it. Mm -hmm. When you post something, maybe there's an opportunity to respond, yep. have a conversation based on that. Yeah, yep. for sure. Yeah. Um, so rewinding back to the start, was that, that was number one? That was, was that number, number one. one. We only was, know what, okay. yeah, let's, let's speed through some others. So yeah, number that, two. Um, that um, channel sponsorship was 18,837 pounds worth of mm -hmm. the 41,500-ish total. So that was quite yep. a significant chunk, um, having uh -huh. that regular income. Um, but having that let me focus on um, other things that I was interested in playing around with rather than having to like follow up with brands and like get other sponsorships and that sort of thing. Yeah. I had a couple. It but, simplifies um, things. Totally, it simplifies. Yep. And um, really what's, what's happened for me in the past year has been an expansion of my income streams. So I huh. have way more income streams, but some of them are earning like just little amounts. But sure. when they all come together, is it, yeah. it all added up to this this yes. doubling of my income? Yeah, yeah. And so the the we, job board is part of that uh, for this year coming. <laughs> yeah, I love that. One of the um, things that we talk about, there's probably a better name for this, but the egg carton method, hmm. where we're like, hey, if you want to earn fifty thousand uh, dollars livable income in some places of the U.S., not everywhere, um, you know, if you're in San Francisco or right. New York, maybe not, but like. What what does it look like to have a, a, a consistent income and you, you're you just getting started? Mm. Some people will look at that and say like, I gotta figure out how to get $50,000 of sponsored content. Right. That's that's, that's gonna be way. really hard. Yeah. But what if you <laughs> look at it like an egg carton and say, mm -hmm. okay, I have 12 spots. How do I get, or 10 if it's a little bit easier math wise, how do I get from 10 different places fifty dollars or $5,000 a year. Mm -hmm. Suddenly those numbers look a little bit different. And then you say, okay, divided by 12, what does that look like a month? Right? Yeah. So I, I see you kind of approaching that a little bit where you say, great. I sponsor content is an important piece, but I also have these other, how many would it be? Seven, I, eight different yeah, like places 10 where you're earning. Even? Yeah. Yeah. Um, my question, follow up question on that would be, you know, you have the increase in income from the sponsorship, that being mm -hmm. significant, the increase in the number of places that you're earning income. Yep. How much of your, how do you make the decision between going wide to a lot of different places versus like going deep and getting really good mm -hmm. at one and just focusing on that? Yep. So I think this is a, maybe we'll call it a luxury that I have as a part-time creator, because like uh -huh. we said, I do have my full-time job, which more than covers my bills. I don't need to earn income from my side hustles. It's more of yeah. like a, um, I 
don't know, it's building up my own business, right? Like on the side, it's and it's fun yep. to explore different ways to, to earn income. So I honestly take the approach of following my own interests. I don't always make decisions based on the earning potential of them. Sure. It's more like how fun is this going to be to work on? Because it is yeah. something I'm doing in my spare time. And yep. I could be doing this or I could be going to hang out on the beach or yeah. you know something else with my life. And yeah. so, yeah, that is a big part of it for me is following the interests. And that keeps the work fun, though. So I uh -huh. actually really like that I can do that. Yeah, huge part of it is your relationship with the work. And mm -hmm. if you're just doing it to try and increase your income, the it could potentially move towards soulless. And yeah. so part of the consideration is like, what is soulful work yeah. plus bonus if you're also able to create an income that you're able to fold mm -hmm. in as kind of a greater part of your kind of uh, portfolio that, yeah, that you're one. creating an income from. Yep. Um, so number one, kind of more income from a specific area. Number mm -hmm. two, broader in terms of the areas that you're creating income from yep number three would be what number three would be and maybe this is a little counterintuitive but actually investing in help um huh. i spent i think it was like 18 no nineteen thousand pounds um in the past year on sure. outsourcing on software yeah. equipment that sort of thing um yeah and that has been key for me in being able to keep up with my side hustles alongside the full-time job. So I have two video yeah. editors who edit all my content. Um, awesome. I think I've edited one of my own videos in the past year. How did um, you find those people to work with? Well, one of them was actually a viewer of mine who cool. you know, had watched my videos, you know, the ones I've been editing myself for years and heard that I was interested in outsourcing it, reached out. I thought, this is great. You already know my style and yeah. like, my content, what I like. Perfect. And that's worked out well. And the other is the sister of a friend here in Valencia who does video yep. editing. It was like, great. Yep. Let's work yeah. with you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, it's interesting. That's similar to how we've found folks that we work with is mm -hmm. either friends of friends, mm -hmm. like, Hey, we know that you're good at this. Maybe you're not our first tier friends. Like I, I'm a little bit cautious of working yeah. directly with friends, Yeah. but when it's like friend of a friend or like family friend, uh, there's, it's like, tier two, you're not like going to hang out with them on Friday night, mm -hmm. um, a, a little bit safer. And then also the great thing about having a group of people who follow you is that it's kind of this, it's, it's the reason people would pay you to have a job listing, like, exactly. cause you have these people <laughs> who get it and know it, but then you can just take advantage of that and not have to pay anybody because yep. it's your network and your followers. What was the, the, the video editing was a piece of it. Was that the primary thing that you had outsourced or were there other things that you'd hired people to help out with or even mentioned software as well? Yeah, yeah. So I also outsource all podcast editing. And the biggest thing for me in the last year that I added was a creative VA and a mm. VA who handles my bookkeeping. So like two yeah. assistants. Um, and the creative VA, Chloe, she handles uploading all of my content. Sure. She'll draft like the title and the description, even sometimes make the thumbnail and Instagram content for me. Um, and that has really helped me on the, like, I love the creating side of creating and not so yeah. much the marketing side of it. Logistics is, and yeah. yeah. I run it because that's what I do for my job is like marketing sure. and design, but you know. Uh, <laughs> yep, yep. So that's been huge because that's kept up my energy for my content, not yeah. having to do the part that like drained me, you know? Yeah, for sure. Um, there's something I've been thinking a lot about is what are the things that matter if I'm doing them? Mm -hmm. Like for you, I, I think of, um, just cause this is the stage we're in, we have a two and a half year old, but you know, Blippi, the YouTube creator, maybe, maybe not. This I don't, is like, I don't have a two and a half year old. So maybe that's why <laughs> this is like, I'm like, you're on YouTube. You should know this person, but it's kind of like <laughs> the internet essentially. Yeah. Uh, but so kind of this, like, I think one of those situations where just kind of stumbled into this. But he's a, we'll do like kids songs or like he'll mm -hmm. go to the zoo and walk through the zoo and cool. but it has like, I don't know, I, I haven't looked, but probably five, 10 million followers. Yep. And, but there was this <laughs> big to do where like he switched out the blippy character and it was no longer him. Oh. And it was like a, a different character still called blippy, but like dressed in the same thing, but different person. And it's like everybody was up in arms about it we weren't that was but a big like, drama in kids yeah YouTube it, that week yeah. <laughs> in toddler youtube um <laughs> but point being like that's not something that can easily be replaced you couldn't replace yourself on your youtube channel but there's a laundry list of things that 
you probably do touch and interact with that don't matter if you do it uploading mm -hmm. editing potentially if it's somebody who's a good editor are there other things that land in that category for you around like things you don't need to do but still need to happen yeah i think well the business admin side is one of them um hand, someone handling the bookkeeping making sure that these people that i work with get paid on time uh -huh. uh, sorting my inbox as well i find my e email inbox really overwhelming and so yeah. having Katie, my VA, who goes in and like puts things in different piles for me and tells yep. me which ones to pay attention to has taken a weight off there and made that less yeah. overwhelming to go into. Um, Instagram as well, like just, I don't know, I sort of feel like when I was publishing my own videos and like doing my own mm -hmm. uploading, I would hit upload, share it on Twitter and be like, oh, done, right, on to yeah. the next one, you know? Uh -huh. um, and that's missing out on a big... Um, audience on Instagram, like it's huge. And I'm sure, especially yeah. for food bloggers, they all know this. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I really have only used Instagram as a, I don't know, maybe I'll say like as a, just a person, as a human, uh -huh, you know, uh -huh. and yeah. less as a creator. Not as a brand. Yeah. Not as a brand, exactly. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it's been really helpful to have Chloe help me navigate that and suggest what to post because she's really good at it. Um, uh -huh. And yeah, just get things out there and she's helping me grow on there more too. Yeah, we, uh, so we're recording this on a Friday. On Tuesday, we will be publishing, I think if everything goes right, a position for Tinybit, which is our parent company, and then Pinch of Yum, kind of an admin assistant role mm -hmm. to do that exact same thing hmm. for me and for Lindsay on the email side of things. Cause it's yep. like email is just so overwhelming and some of it matters for you to do it, but yep. other parts don't. What advice would you have for people who are looking to have somebody help with email? Mm. I think get, getting clear on what you want to get out of it and like, what is your current issue, you know? So like uh -huh. one of the issues for me, well, the two main ones were dealing with the sponsorship requests, like going through them, seeing what I wanted to explore further and what I didn't or partnerships, whatever that sort of thing. Uh, and also making sure that really important emails didn't get lost amongst all of the former. Yeah. Um, whether that's replies from people that I've reached out to personally or, uh, you know, there's some like key contacts that I always need to mm -hmm. talk to you, like my video editors, for example. Mm -hmm. um, I also wanted to make sure that I was seeing all replies to my newsletter, because if someone's mm. going to take the time to read an email and reply to me, I want to make sure I'm reading that and like hopefully yeah. replying to them too. And so, yeah, she set up my inbox in a way that makes those things clear, because I knew that that was my main issues that I was trying to solve for with email. Yeah. Um, yeah. So trying to think through that rather than just saying like, ah, my email inbox is overwhelming. It's like, well, uh -huh. what is overwhelming about it? Yes. And what you found to be overwhelming was everything was equal priority. Yes. And yeah. like, I felt like I was missing things. And so I was going in and like reading everything and looking at everything to try uh -huh. and find the gold. And so having someone come in and sort of tell me what I should pay attention to and yeah. what doesn't need to be read right then. Um, if you are doing a four hour like live Twitch stream and you have an hour after to do email, probably shouldn't spend 30 minutes of it like reviewing random follow-up delivery notifications from a package or like yep, whatever yep. it might be yeah. <laughs> to have somebody who kind of will sort that for you and then prioritize prioritize that and say like hey here are the here's a bucket for newsletter responses here's mm -hmm. a bucket for like like vip or like what are what are the different you kind of mentioned a few of those yeah yeah is it like labels within gmail yeah it's, it's kind of specific but gmail, i'm curious and yeah. as well as a specific view of my you know like inbox first page you see i don't even know how to set this up so that's great sure. that she's been doing it for yeah, me. Yeah. But there's like yeah. a section for sponsorship requests. So I can just very quickly, when I'm in that zone, go through mm -hmm. and I have like a text expander that I, I can type to decline automatically yeah. if I want to, you know, yeah, so yeah. like an auto response um, uh -huh. or choose to follow up if I want to. So I can quickly clear that out. And then there's the VIP section and then um, a bunch of other folders that she's made for organizing every single email really but mm -hmm. they're the ones that I don't need to go into unless I'm specifically looking for something. Sure. Yeah. Yep. That makes sense.